Kate and I'm back with another video. Um, the year is wrapping up and I have been doing my 2019 goal wrap up. I have been, I always like to clean my needles off before the end of the year so I haven't been starting any new projects and I am only working on one project which is the Scrappy Happy because I, do, I like to go into the new year with nothing on the needle start new I don't know why I like to do that I'm not a New Year's resolution person I am a goal person but not a New Year's resolution per person anyway that's not what this video is about I'm also setting my goals for 2020 and making some plans based on what I have and I sat down and I've gone through my entire craft room and I figured out what I have supplies for craft wise and for a few years now Sorry, for a few years now, I've been watching Flosstube and a lot of floss tubers talk about this stitch from stash. And it's great, it's a, a budget-based stitching challenge, like a self self-motivated challenge. And I've always thought that could work for all crafts. So I finally sat down a few days ago and I ironed out all the details of it. This is a make-along. I'm calling it Craft From Str Craft From Stash. Very original. And I make no qualms about the fact that this is not my original idea. I am totally copying someone. I am just encompassing more than just cross-stitch. So, um, it's a budget-based reward system of crafting. Um, a big goal I have for 2020 is to use what I have as much as I can because we will again be traveling in later this year and in October I have a plan to go somewhere with some friends and I know that there'll be money spent there. So I really want to use what I have. Now when I moved, I downsized substantially my crafting supplies, but I still have so much and I just like too many crafts. So there's so much yarn and so much fabric and so much paper and so much cross stitch and so much anything else that someone could mention to me that I'd be like, oh, I can do that. I want to do that. For instance, when I was in Amish country, I got this felt kit. Not felting, it's like cutting out an applique felt. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea, but I bought a kit. So, all right. So, craft from stash. I've started a group on Facebook, which I'll put a link to down below, for this challenge. And I would like to just say there are no prizes in this challenge. This is purely a motivational challenge um, to get us to work from our stash and on our budget and stick to our budget. Um, I do have a document pulled up on the side of my computer so if I look off to the side I apologize. Um, so I guess I'll just jump into it. If you're interested, go to the Facebook group, answer the questions, and I will, I'll let you in. As long as you answer the questions, I'll let you into the group. The more the merrier. And it'll be fun. I decided not to do prizes because I just don't know where I'm going to be six months from now because this is the first section is a six-month challenge. So this challenge is going to run this time, January 1st, till um, 30 days of September, April, June, and November, till June 30th <laughs> for six months. So let me t go to the document. The goal is to encourage everyone to use our stash first and to be more mindful in our craft supply purchasing. The challenge is intended to motivate each of us, and for that reason, there will be no prizes. Also, this is not my original idea. I've been hearing about Stitch from Stash on YouTube for a few, few years, and I thought this would be great for all crafts. Um, a few pieces of housekeeping for Facebook is that I expect everyone in the group to respect each other. If you don't, I'm going to take you out of the group. And the group is for the challenge only. So there's no selling, no de-stashing, no promoting your Etsy shop, myself included. Um, so let's talk about how this works. 
every person who participates is going to set a monthly craft budget for themselves between $0 and $25 a month. Um, and that's what you get to spend on craft supplies. Um, if you say you set a balance of $20 and you only spend $10 in the month of January and February, that $10 carries over it's like rollover minutes on cell phones which i don't think they even do anymore so though that money rolls over and it's not like if you don't use it you lose it you know like vacation days <laughs> so and every time you finish a project you'll get a small credit to your budget and i mean small it does very small um it doesn't matter when you start the project only when you finish it and at the end of each month You'll go over to Facebook and you'll post and there's a, a format. You're going to post what month it was, the budget for your month, including your rollovers, what you spent, credits for your finished objects, and your new balance. And then I want you to post photos or a video. I'd love to see videos. That would be awesome. Um, and all crafts are included. If you can craft it. It counts. I don't care if you're gluing together popsicle sticks or pom-poms or if you're knitting an intricate cable color work sweater. I don't think there is such a thing, but you know what I mean. All crafts count. Um, if you have already committed to some sort of subscription or subscription box, for instance, I have a subscription to Silhouette and each month I get a certain credit to the store at a much a deeply discounted price and I've had that subscription since I got silhouette I'm already subscribed to it that does not count towards my monthly budget but if I were to order say knit crate which I don't have that would count towards my budget so any subscriptions you already have be it Mary Maxim silhouette knit crate I don't know what else is out there I think there's a stitchy box there's a quilty box any of those that you're already subscribed to, that's great, doesn't count towards your budget. But if you say, ooh, I really want Knit Crate, ooh, I really want to join the Mary Maxim, ooh, I really want Stitchy Box, that counts. You have to factor that into your budget. Um, and for the purpose of this challenge, and this is different than Stitch from Stash, a craft supply is anything you need to work on and finish a project. That means needles, that means fiber fill, that means yarn, that means fabric, that means thread, that means floss, that means Q-snaps, that means um, sewing machine needles, batting, glue, tape, sequins, uh, what else? Project bags, all those, I am considering them a craft supply. Um, if you are given a gift certificate, that's fair game. You haven't spent any money that does not impact your balance you can go hog wild on that and don't have to count it towards your uh, budget if you purchase craft supplies for a gift to give said craft supplies to someone as a gift that does not impact your budget however if you decide you want to crochet a blanket for your best friend's dog Sure. And you go and buy yarn, that counts. Any craft supply you are going to use counts. If you purchase a craft supply for someone else to use, does not count. Purchase a craft supply for you to use, even if you're giving it away when you're done, it counts. And I'm seeing all these typos here. <laughs> if you would like to play along, I ask that you go onto the Facebook group, join the Facebook group. Post your, your budget for the month and let us know what crafts you're, you enjoy or are going to be working on. And, of course, have fun and let's craft. So, I did make a chart of what the credits will be for certain projects. And I didn't break it down by actual projects. So, let's say, for instance, okay, thanks. Think some thoughts, get them together. Okay. The breakdown is, is my suggestion for budget credits. And I have made the credits very small because 
I see the point of this challenge as going first into our stash and using what we have and planning our projects around what we have. And if we need something, that's what the budget is for. So um, the credits may seem small. So let me give you a few, few examples of what I've put in as a credit. For instance, if you do a yarn project that uses 100 to 250 yards of yarn, you get one, and you finish the project, you have to finish the project, you get $1 credited to your budget for that project. If you do, I don't have it down here, 10 squares on your sock yarn blanket, that I'm saying you don't have to finish because those are literally, to me, are like mini finishes. If you make 10 of those, you get a $1 credit to your budget for the month. And say, for instance, let's see. Sorry about that. Let's make sure I'm still recording. I am. The green light's on. Say for scrapbooking, if you finish five greeting cards or five scrapbook pages, I'm saying you get $1. If you do a cross-stitch project, let's pull a bigger one here that has 6,401 stitches to 12,800 12, stitches, you get a $5 credit. If you uh, start to finish, make a quilt that's twin size or larger, you get $8 credit, and so on and so forth. And I do have diamond painting in there. I figured diamond painting in a similar fashion to cross stitch. and. I'm sure this is not an exhaustive list that I've put together and I'd be happy to help you figure out, you know, what the credit should be. But this is self self-driven. So if you don't agree with my budgets, you can take the budget that you want and um or the budget credit that you want that you see see as fair and go from it. So I'm going to give you a suggestion of what not a suggestion an example by me what I'm doing initially I was going to do a zero dollar budget but inevitably I always need thread I always need zippers and I always see something that I have to have so I decided to go with a five dollar budget with the intention of not touching it and stashing that away for uh, trip I have coming up in the fall so putting that away and I also looked at what I generally finish in a month and you've seen me for a while you know I do tend to finish several things within a month I have been known to knit more than one sweater in a month I have been known to knit more than one pair of socks in a month. I have been known to finish a lot of things in a month. So realistically, I know that even with those small incremental credits, I'll probably be getting five or so dollars in credit into my balance. So clear as mud, clear as mud. I'm going to suggest that everybody go over to the Facebook group and join. I think this could be a lot of fun, and I think it is a way of working from the stash without, what's the word I'm thinking of? Oh, this removes the, oh, I can't think of the word. I can't think of the word. I thought of the word. So this is a way to um, go on a yarn diet, a craft diet, and all those things without depriving yourself because you do have this small little nest egg that if you don't spend it is going to grow. You're going to have this small little budget sitting there that you can use and you can spend however you want or you can save it and watch it grow. Oh, kind of like you sit there and watch your craft supply stash grow. Anyway, okay, I've I've said too much. So I hope that you guys will all think about joining the challenge. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, you don't have to only post monthly. You can post anytime you want, as long as you're nice to each other. I don't care. 
let's be nice to each other and not spend a lot of money and make a lot of stuff. <laughs> all right, that is all I have for you guys. I hope to see you over on Facebook and stay tuned because I have some videos planned for the next couple days. I have some videos planned and I'm hoping to get a little bit more consistent in my video posting. I'm trying to get to once a week until we hit the road. And then once we hit the road, all bets are off. I'll post when I can. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're enjoying your holiday season and I will talk to you.